guys, it's Dr. Hayes, and this is part one of the two-part um, coming-of-age picture books videos that I'm going to be doing for you. And so I'm going to, I have a PowerPoint that I'm going to show and talk over it. I'm going to attempt to minimize my screen a little bit and uh, show you some of the things from the PowerPoint. But I also have actual books here that I'm going to show. So there's going to be some movement of the camera. We'll see how it works. Hopefully it goes okay. And uh, so just bear with me. So this is going to be two parts. Remember this week you have um, no in-person class, but we're going to do just these two videos instead. And there'll be a discussion post that goes with each one. So just kind of like how we've talked about in class, how I've had certain themes that go along with coming of age. Um, which mostly have focused on adolescence and the coming of age process that happens transitioning from child into adult um, in adolescence with the novels we've been reading. I thought this week we could take a break from the novels and the old things for older readers and look at some of those same themes as they apply to younger readers who are not quite to the age where they're ready to go into adolescence and transition into adulthood, but the kinds of books, like picture books, that um, get them ready for that process. So there are certain growing up milestones that young people experience um, before they go into adolescence. And it's some of the same things we've been talking about in class with the teenagers. So the first video is going to cover um, a couple of our themes, which are you know, identity, who am I, right? And then also um, school, uh, going going to school. You know, we have, uh, you've talked about education as one of our themes. I have some books over here we're going to share for that. So I have education as, as um, something we've looked at in all of our books is what kind of educational opportunities are available to our characters based on their class and their gender and their uh, race. And so we will look at how starting school and going to school is shown as a major milestone in picture books for younger readers as well. And but before that, we're going to go into books about identity, like who am I, right? This is something we've talked about, about all of our novels so far. So who am I? What am, what am I here for? Uh, you know, what? how do I fit into this world? And so there are definitely picture books about that as well. So we'll start talking about those and then we'll move into talking about the ones for school. Then the next video, part two, we'll have two more um, themes that we're going to cover that we've also covered in class. Um, one of those is planning for the future. You know, that what am I going to be? What's my purpose here? What am I, what am I shooting for? What What's my adult life going to be like? So dreaming about the future, planning for the future, setting those goals. There are picture books that get kids ready for that kind of attitude as well. And then the last theme in the second video that we're going to talk about is um, sexual development. Uh, we've talked about that in some of our books so far um, that we've read, the novels we've read in class, but there are picture books, plenty and tons of picture books about uh, puberty and sexual development and, and sort of getting getting young people ready to make that transition. So though that's what we'll talk about in the second video. Uh, but for now, let me see if I can um, get rid of this. So I've got um, a PowerPoint here. We're going to try, I'm going to try to make my way through it. Uh, and so sometimes the camera will come back up and sometimes it won't. So we'll see. Um, here we go. So the first section of books that we're going to talk about, books about being yourself. So your identity, how do you recognize who you are? How do you um, determine what's, you know, wh where do you fit in on this, in this world? So, um, okay, the first one, let me pull myself up here. Um, I should be right here. <laughs> I know it's very small. It's a very small little camera. Um, so we're going to talk about for, I might m maximize it actually. Um, yeah, let's see. So the first book we'll talk about is a kind of a classic Ferdinand. They made a, um, movie about it recently, a cartoon, John Cena voiced Ferdinand, but, uh, Ferdinand is a bull 
uh, who doesn't want to be a bull, right? There's certain expectations on him. I was looking, um, 1936. I was going to say, this is old school, right? This is one of the, one of the very first picture books. Picture books started in the 1920s, and so this is from 1936. And so, uh, I'm not going to go into super long detail about every single book that uh, that's on here, because this video would be too long, but, um... You're probably familiar with Ferdinand. He he just wants to smell flowers, and he wants to. Um, he's very gentle-hearted, but because he's a bull, he's expected to be angry and he's expected to be violent. And Ferdinand is all about his journey toward accepting who he is and getting everyone else to accept um, that he is not what he appears to be. He's not. He doesn't. He's resisting his destiny, right? He, to be a. a a bull in a ring. There's a picture of him in an arena and he's just sitting down, right? He's not aggressive. He doesn't want to fight. And there's pictures throughout of him, you know, sniffing the flowers and being very gentle. And so this is a very early example of a book about uh, identity. Um, so let's see. I think the next one we've got is A Color of His Own. Um, Leo Leone. Leo Leone is a classic. I'll blow myself up again. So, Leo, uh, Color of His Own is about a chameleon um, who, you know, he's trying to figure out where he fits in because chameleons um, are expected to change to fit in wherever they go, right? They're expected to um, blend into their environment and not stand out. And so, it's about this little um, chameleon who's sort of on this journey to find uh, where he fits in and find what his color is and um, he wants to be more individual he doesn't necessarily always want to blend in so it's a book about colors and and patterns and things but it's also um, a book about you know finding where you belong finding your identity um, and standing out when you're expected to fit in right um, so these are some of these old I think Leo Leone I think his books are a little um, they're not super new. Of course, there isn't a page in the front, it's, but it's in the back. Yeah. 1975. So it's a little bit later than um, Ferdinand, but not super new either. Um, so the next book is um, very similar to... Um, Ferdinand, A Color of His Own. We have, I don't have a copy of this one, but it's called Brontarina, and it's about a dinosaur who just wants to dance. She wants to be a ballerina, but she's big and awkward and gawky, and um, she's told, you know, you can't do that. So it's all about um, overcoming what everybody expects you to do. This is like a theme of big, gangly creatures who want to be dainty, or who want to go where they you know, do, do like dan dancing specifically. Um, Ferdinand is very similar to that because he's, he just wants to smell flowers and he kind of, there's little scenes where he does little dances and some ballet moves and things. Brontarina is the same way. Um, and then we have Giraffes Can't Dance, which is almost the same plot, right? If you have this giraffe who's this gangly, awkward creature and, um, he just wants to dance. And there's all these scenes about him trying to contort his long, weird body into these ballet poses. So I don't know what it is about dance. I guess dance is such a delicate um, activity. And so it, you have to, the expectation is that you have a certain beautiful, lithe body shape to be able to do it. And so that you have these creatures who, um, you know, they, they try, they overcome. And so they build confidence and find their identity through dance. There's a whole like theme of that. Um, another one who is about a, a, about a character who tries to usurp her identity to, um, or the usurp expectations to find her identity is not quite narwhal, which is obviously a play on not quite normal. And it's about a unicorn who was, she has her whole life. She has been under the water. She has a little, um, like a little helmet on, like an air breathing helmet on. And so she thinks she's a narwhal because she has a horn and she's under the water, but she eventually does get up to the surface and she finds a whole pack of unicorns up on the land and she realizes she's one of them. So she has to kind of decide where she belongs. This is another whole, <coughs> sorry, genre of picture books too, is displaced 
species where, um, like Stella, I don't have a picture of this one, but Stella Luna is about a bat who, um, thinks it's a bird because it was adopted by birds and, um, lost its parents. And you have, um, the ugly duckling who, you know, thinks it's a duckling, but it's really a swan. And so there's all these different, um, stories of animals who, uh, think they belong in one specific species because they were adopted or, um, did, never knew what they really were and they have to discover who they really are. So that's a, that's a recurring theme in picture books to help, um, young children when they're reading this to get them ready for that process where they're questioning who they are and where they belong and their identity. Um, usually it's used with species of animals that are out of place or in the wrong place. Um, there's also a, a big part of learning identity, learning your um, sort of who you are and your purpose is um, a lot of it's appearance based um, early on. Not all of it, but some of it's appearance based um, because that's one of the first things we notice when we start becoming self-aware and we start noticing I'm different than you are. You're different than I am. And you, you and he are different from each other, right? That's one of the things we first notice is the appearance. Once we mature and we get a little bit older into adolescence, we recognize that, um, there is a, a deeper, uh, deeper aspects to what makes us different, what makes our identity. But there are books like this on Skin Like Mine that celebrates diversity uh, amongst appearance. And this is just an, there's just an example. There's lots of these kinds, but I just, I picked this one as an example to show. Um, uh, here's another one that's, uh, Grace Byers is sort of a, a really well-known African-American um, author and poet. And this is a picture book she did, I Am Enough. And it's a celebration of um, African-American appearance and accomplishments. And, um, you know, a, uh, there's no need to conform. There's no need to try to be what you're not, what you are is enough. So there's this message of um, figuring out what you have to offer the world and how that makes you who you are. So this is, you know, just a recurring theme in children's books. Like I said, I'm not going into super detail about all of these, but I picked out a few. Okay, so here's another one. Julian is a mermaid. Um, so this book is one of several that have recently come out. Here it is. And they deal with um, getting kids ready for uh, LGBTQ questions and ideas. So this one is about a boy who discovers that he um, would prefer to um, dress, he, he prefers to dress in feminine clothing. Um, so um, he, he's, I'll show you just a couple pictures. So they're on the, it's like they're on the train or on the bus and there are these women who come in and they're dressed up like mermaids in their dresses. So he sees them and he's with his grandmother and he just thinks they're absolutely beautiful. And so he goes home and, um, he's fantasizing. Well, before he gets home, he's fantasizing about being able to be a mermaid. See, he's sitting up, oh, other side. He's sitting up here on the, on the train and he's fantasizing about being able to shed his clothes and become a, a mermaid, right? Like they are. And so, uh, while his, he goes home and while his mother, uh, his grandmother, here's another one of his fantasies where he's full on mermaid. So when he, um, his grandmother's in the shower, so he starts trying to look at stuff from around the house to figure out things that he can put on um, to become a mermaid. He's got the curtains. He's got some flowers on her flower pot. Um, he's got, uh, I think at one point he puts on some, um, some of her jewelry, but I could be wrong about that. Um, um, oh no, here he is. He's putting on down here. I'm trying to get it. It's backwards. Down here, he's putting on some lipstick at her, at her, uh, vanity. Um, well, his grandmother comes out and catches him and you think that he's going to get in trouble, right? She sees him and she's like, mm. yeah. So she, you think, I'm trying to hold it without, <laughs> so she says, she says, come here. And so turns out she gets dressed up too. 
Um, she grabs her stuff. She grabs an umbrella. And she prances him through the town. Um, and she takes him to a parade. It appears to be a parade of, like, a drag queen style parade. Or maybe a mermaid style parade. So he's in his outfit. And she's like, come on, let's join them. And so they join this parade of people dressed like sea mermaids and sea creatures. And he is thrilled. Right. He's absolutely thrilled to be among them. And among the beautiful mermaid creatures that he feels like he belongs to. So there's a metaphor here of, again, just like the Brontarina and the Giraffe Ferdinand, you have this theme of... Um, basically recognizing and feeling self-conscious about the expectations that are put on you to be a certain way, but then um, coming to a point where you can accept or and embrace who you are instead of who people want you to be, um, which is a huge part of, of forming your identity. And um, so the, these there's a, a recent surge in that style of book. Let me see, what, what do we have next? The Boy with the Pink Hair is another similar one to this. I actually have a, cop a copy of this one. Um, so The Boy with the Pink Hair is very similar. It's about a boy who was born, wait for it, with pink hair, <laughs> right? So he was born that way. And so it's a thing, it's an oddity that sets him apart. And um, people people kind of point when he's out with his parents, Um See the little boy, people point and, and are wondering what's going on. Why does he have pink hair? But he was just kind of born that way. And he goes to school and it's, he makes these friends. And um, he also, his his um, gift is he's a really good baker. And so there's this whole thing about how he teaches the kids in his class. There's an emergency. they have having a party and like they're catered or canceled or something like that. And so he teaches them. Um, all of his classmates about how to bake the way he bakes and there was a bully who who always bullied him about it but he basically uses his baking to save the day and um, then everyone in the town uh, he he feels like he fits in and everyone's like yay and she, she's waving at him and they're wa they're all waving and he's he feels like he's found his place in the community um, when you know he was very self-conscious about how different he was early on with because he was born with this difference. He was born with a difference. It's probably a metaphor for all kinds of um, situations you can be born with. Um, homosexuality, a neuro, neuro disorder, or a, a physical you know, disorder that sets you apart, that makes you subconscious. There's all kinds of things it could be a metaphor for. Um, but he uses his uh, individual characteristics he was born with to actually solidify a place for himself in the community. And um, it's just great. I just <laughs> love that book. But anyway, those, you know, this book's about um, being who you are and, um, whoops, let me go back. Can I go back? Yeah, there's one more. <laughs> um, books about being who you are and, um, and not not apologizing about the space you take up in the world, and you, but instead fitting into that space and inviting other people into that space with you. Um, the last book in this uh, section I was going to talk about, um, I just wanted to give an, a, a sample of, there are several books that um, look at the concept of who I am and and what is my purpose here and wh where do I fit in um, regarding religious experiences. Um, Jewish, Islam, um, you know, Christianity. There's all different kinds of books that help children come to terms with their religious identity. And so I just picked this one under my hijab, and it's it's about a a um, Muslim girl and and sort of her identity with her head covering and how and and how she's she's an individual beyond that, and how you know that's just a small aspect of who she is, and how but also how it helps define who she is. Um, but this is just, like I said, this is an example. There's lots of books, um, that um, help kids reconcile, um, a, 
um, a religious identity, especially if it is physically performative, like wearing a head covering for a female Muslim, or sometimes there are head head coverings for um, like Jewish males, for example, with a yarmulke. And, um, and so anyway, it, there. this is a whole other aspect of children's coming of age books is um, not just your, their um, sort of mental psychological identity, but also part of that is a spiritual identity that they might have. Uh, but I didn't want to have a huge big list of those because they're just, we'd be here forever. But I just wanted you to realize that that's a whole other aspect. Okay, so I think that's all the books, I, that's all the books I was going to show you as examples of books about being yourself and about coming to terms with your identity. Um, so we'll move on to the other section, the second section of books for this uh, part one of the video, and that's books about school. In class and throughout the semester we have talked about educational opportunities for characters and especially when they are growing up this is a huge factor in contributing to how they mature and how they enter into the world and so picture books cover this as well so I have some, some several books in person and then I have just some pictures of others um, so this the first book I'm going to talk about is the oldest one I have and it's called getting ready for school it's a Sesame Street book Right, so this is just a sample. There's all kinds of books throughout. It's probably one of the oldest kinds of picture books we have. Um, instructional wise, the ones that weren't just stories um, were school picture books because school stories are one of the oldest kinds of children's books that exist. Uh, stories set in school, uh, stories about going to school, uh, books used in school. Uh, these are some of the oldest ones we have. So um, there are a lot. I'm just, I just picked a few. Some I have and then a few from that I put pictures of. But this is just a, a Sesame Street one. Sesame Street is the OG king of preparing children for any number of growing up situations <laughs> that they might be in um so you gotta you know you gotta pay respect to sesame street but it's, it has all these uh, like pictures of them going to the classroom and all the different kinds of like things they do in the classroom areas of the classroom um um that's even there's even like a little game of following if you ride in the car or whether you ride the bus and how do you get there you know <laughs> it's pretty cool um and it's very interactive and so it, it talks about meeting your teacher, and it talks about etiquette on the playground, class pets. Here's uh, lunchtime, music class, and it has little stuff about that. And there's all kinds of little things to look for on every page, like <laughs> this puppet right here is eating a shoe <laughs> for lunch. I don't know what's happening there. Um, this one's eating a globe for lunch. So some of them have appropriate things and some of them have inappropriate things. Like he's trying to eat a sandwich with a hammer. Um, so, <laughs> so that's just kind of a funny little thing. There's lots of stuff to look at. So on my way with Sesame Street, getting ready for school. This was just a one that I actually have. So I thought I would show it to you. Um, this is actually a trend um, of, you know, in books about school is books getting, preparing a kid for a certain grade or certain level like here's one uh kindergarten here i come let me get my camera back uh kindergarten here i come it's another book about you know how do you get ready for kindergarten and it's you know going and meeting the teacher um recess i like how the very first two first pages are your teacher and recess let's just talk about those let's get those out of the way <laughs> i bet you um there's a page about lunch at some time um there's the no nap rap. I'm not tired. I'm not sleepy. I'm wide awake. You see, it's daytime. It's my playtime. You say nap time, not for me. I'll lie flat upon the mat, but I'm not counting sheep. You can snooze, but I refuse. Oh no, I will not go to. <laughs> this is a fun read aloud. This is a fun read aloud book. Um, but a lot of uh, most of the pages are in verse like that, like they rhyme. Um, like there's like this one, uh, uh, talking about friends, George, I have a kindergarten friend who isn't very big. I'm talking about George Washington, our classroom guinea pig. I always stop to talk to him about the stuff we like. I tell him what's on TV and how to ride a bike. 
I'm teaching him his ABCs and how to draw a heart. He always pays attention. That George is clearly very smart about the classroom pet. So all of the pages are little poems like that. Um, another similar one. This one is actually a classic. Uh, when you go to kindergarten, this one is you know sort of an award-winning classic book. When you go to kindergarten, um, and it's more of a instead of a entertainment like the kindergarten here I come with poems. This one has real pictures and it's very practical um, preparation like walk, you know the crossing guard, the school bus. Um, it's showing kids with their little cubbies. So it's more of a, this is what you can expect when you get there, right? This is, you know, it shows a kid raising his hand to ask a question and that's how you're supposed to do. It shows them lining up for the water fountain to take turns. Um, and, oh, <laughs> check this out. Look at this kid with the, with the headphones. <laughs> so this book is a little bit older, <laughs> obviously. Um, but you, this probably be a familiar page to you. Uh, all of these, the classic books there and reading time. So, but when you go to kindergarten is this, this sort of this classic book that everybody recommends you get because it has these real pictures in it. Studies have shown that books like this help kids feel a little bit more secure when they are about to go to school because they, there's a little bit more of an understanding about what they're going to expect. And so something we've talked about in class is that a lot of these coming of age milestones that the characters in the books have experienced and that people experience in life happens because of um, uncertainty and uh, not really knowing what to expect and things happening that you didn't know about. And, and there's a lot of embarrassment when there's something you should know that you don't. Right. And so a lot of these books about these younger coming of age milestones, um, help dispel some of that, um, uncertainty about what to expect. So that's what, a lot of what these school books are for. Um, another similar one. Let's see the next one. Yeah, this is a similar one, but it's for, um, older, like next stop. Whoop, sorry about throwing the ground. <laughs> next stop, second grade. And this is, I just picked this as a sample of, it's not just kindergarten. It's not just when I start school. It's, um, you know, there's, there's ones for all different kinds of grade. There's middle school and fifth grade. And, um, how is this grade going to be different? What kinds of things am I going to be expected to know now that I'm going to a new grade? Um, so I just wanted to show you, it's not just a kindergarten thing. There's other grades as well. Um, Okay, so the next book, I just, I had this one. It's super cute, so I wanted to show it to you. Um, so that not all books are about, like, preparing you for a certain grade or anything. Um, this one is about a girl, Ruby, that's her, Ruby the copycat. And when she goes to school, she's very insecure about who she is and what's expected. So she just copies what everybody else does. Um, the, I think this character's name is Angela and she wears whatever Angela wears and see, and she puts the bow in her hair and tries to dress. And she answers the same way that Angela does. And, and Angela gets frustrated by it. And she's like, that's what, that's me. You're not me. You're you. And so spoiler by the end, Ruby figures out how to, um, make distinguish herself as Ruby and as to be unique. And, and she realizes that everyone actually, appreciates her more when she is herself, right? So it's more of a general lesson about how to um, navigate belonging to a group more than it is about how to go to school specifically. But that socialization aspect of school is a huge part of coming of age. It's a huge part of going to school is being um, exposed to large groups of diverse people for the first time, strangers, making friends, figuring out where you fit in that group, figuring out appropriate and inappropriate actions and things to say in a group like that. And so this book is more focusing on the socialization aspect of school, but it's pretty cute. Okay. Uh, the next one I have that I actually have a copy of, let's see, is the kissing hand. This one should probably be familiar to you. It's so sweet, right? The kissing hand is, um, it's, so, I don't know. It just touches me. I re remember reading this book to my kid whenever she was going to school. 
but it's about a little raccoon who's going to school for the first time and they're nocturnal so the little school um it's all very realistic the school they're going to is um like there's a little it's like a little sandbox but they're going to into the like a, the park at night um so um there are characters um when they gather let me see if i can get a picture of all the different creatures uh gathering um you know, for school, and they're there. So they're, I mean, it's not like there's a school building and they wear clothes. It's not like that, like books with animals that are dressed up like people. Um, he's going uh, to school at night with all of these little, she's sending, see, there's the mom down here. And she's sending him off to school, and there's all these other animals that are coming to school at night. Well, what, how she helps him feel secure is that he's really scared and so what she does is she kisses him in his hand over here sorry she kisses him in his hand and then it's magically it's stored there right so if he gets nervous he's got her kiss power stored up in his hand um and so it, it gives him confidence the whole night at school and let me see if there's a scene where he um, oh, this is a cute, <laughs> when he's in his class, so the owl is the teacher, and here they are, here he is, they're all in class <laughs> at night, and so there's one part where he, he's, he puts his little, um, paw, uh, over here on his face, and so the kiss is there, so he remembers his mom's kiss, and so he does this, and it makes him feel okay, because <laughs> it's like she's kissing him. It's so sweet. And so this was made so that um, parents could read it with their kids if their kids were a little bit nervous about going to school or just anywhere new. Maybe they're going to sleep over with a friend for the first time or maybe they're going on a trip with, with grandparents or, you know, somewhere new. And so this is a technique where you can be like, look, here's a kiss. I'm gonna, I'll kiss your hand. And so you keep that. And then if you ever, if you miss me or if you're scared, you just, you can use it and it's there for you, you know, and so I just absolutely love this book, <laughs> but it's, it's, you know, it's not directly about school, but it kind of is about helping to f dispel some of that nervousness about school. Um, okay. So the last book I have, I think this is the last book I have that I have in person. I couldn't let books about school and picture books about school, specifically picture books. There's a lot of young reader like novel chapter books about school which i'm not even talking about those but um no this isn't the last book sorry there's a <laughs> um I, I had to mention diary for wimpy kid these are massively pop popular okay if you look over my head right there is the whole series i have the whole series on my shelf of um diary for wimpy kid this is the first one um so i I call them picture books. They're technically, I mean, they kind of cross the line, but there's lots of illustrations on every page, but they're lo it's longer. So I guess you could argue that it's maybe an illustrate, <coughs> an illustrated chapter book, <coughs> but I felt like it got honorable mention because it is, you know, a, a picture book, um, about going to school and all of the, all of the things about growing up and making friends and getting in trouble and who, where do I fit in and, um, you know, being bullied and just all kinds of things and Diary of a Wimpy Kid and, and the books, you know, all cover different, um, at, they're not all about school, but the, you know, the first one definitely is. So I thought I would mention it if you haven't read these, surely you guys have probably grown up reading these. My daughter loves them, but um, I had to mention Diary of a Movie Kid as a picture book that is all about school. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah. Okay, so I have another book on here. Uh, this one I just thought was funny. <laughs> and it is um, First Day Jitters. <laughs> And it is a, you might have read this book, but it is about, um, like there's this person, the character, the main character, um, 
who it just we have this man sarah and the character's name after me so i think it's even better um sarah dear time to get out of bed mr hartwell said so we have this man mr hartwell coming in to wake up sarah and says um you don't want to miss the first day at your new school right and so um sarah says i'm not going right and pulls the covers up over her head and the pets are trying to pull the covers off and it's all about how this um sarah's like but what if you don't go everyone no one will know you're there and and he's like look i've i've packed you your lunch and you know i've got you some breakfast and you know you're you're ready to go um and so they walk to the car he's taking her to the car he's like i'll take you let's go you're gonna be fine and she's all nervous she, and so they were there in front of the school and sarah says i feel sick said Sarah weakly. Nonsense, said Mr. Hartwell. You'll love your new school once you get started. Oh, look, there's the principal, Mrs. Burton. Sarah slumped down in her seat because she didn't want the principal to see her. <laughs> and so, um, and then Mrs. Burton comes on and says, oh, Sarah, there you are. Come on, I'll show you where to go. So the principal comes and gets her and she takes her inside and there's all these kids rushing around and she's really nervous and then um she finally gets in there and you figure out that sarah sarah hartwell is the teacher <laughs> and so the whole thing was the teacher being nervous about going to a school for the first time and mr hartwell who made her lunchbox and made her breakfast and drove her to school that's her husband who was and the principal was like her boss who was helping her out of the car and showing her I don't know, maybe because I'm a teacher, this delights me. <laughs> the first day jitters. And it's, so it's kind of like, you know, when you're reading it to a kid, they think that it's just a standard afraid of the first day of school book, right? Like your the kids are going to love you. You'll make lots of friends. The principal's nice. You know, I've packed you a special treat in your lunchbox. You'll be great. You know, <laughs> and then you get there and you figure out that she's the teacher. And so, it, kid, kids, this, the big twist of that at the end, the kids are like, wait, what? The teacher was afraid? That's silly. And she, teachers are adults. They're not supposed to be scared. So it kind of makes the kid, if the kid reader, um, or being read to, was scared, it kind of makes them feel better because, you know, the, it's showing that the adult, the teacher was just as scared to come in there and be in the classroom and meet all the new people also. So it makes the kid reader feel better um, if they, <laughs> if the teacher's uh, scared. So this book, I just, it just delights me. I just love this book. So let me memorize here. I think that, see if I have, yeah, so I have a few more to show you, just pictures, excuse me. So I have a few more that are um, minority, the minority experience in, of going to school. This one, the name jar, um, it's about a girl. Um, I forget her nationality, but she's from somewhere in Asia. Uh, I forget which country, but, um, her name is difficult to pronounce. And it's kind of all about the self-consciousness she has from her, um, non-Western sounding name and, and how she's worried that no one will be able to spell it or pronounce it. And the, the book is just sort of encouraging, students with um you know non-american or non um whatever if they live in a place where they are they are a minority uh, it's encouraging minority children to not be self-conscious about the um ethnicity apparent in their name um or their you know and they, to expand that their identity um it's a cute cute book um but here's another one that's all about diversity all are welcome and um you notice, you might notice that there's a character, I don't know if you can see my cursor, but there's a character down here with the hijab on. There's an African-American character, or a couple of them. The teacher, there's, you know, characters of different um, appearances and abilities and um, ethnicities. And so it's sort of a book all about um, being welcoming about the various people who you might meet in school. Um and then this is the last book I was going to show you. Um, Jacqueline Woodson, the author, is amazing. I absolutely love her. She has written several novels for young adults that, you know, I've taught them in other classes. 
and um, she's a African American uh, lesbian woman, so she has all kinds of um, experiences to share as far as experiencing diversity and discrimination and um, helping young readers uh, overcome those those experiences and to um, be inclusive. And so this book is a it's a picture book, and it's called The Day You Begin, and it's a great first day of school book, but it's also, it's not quite so specific as that. The day you begin, the way it's framed, it could be just beginning something new, uh, moving away or starting a new hobby or um, maybe joining a new family. There's all kinds of things that you could begin um, in in this book. And, and a lot of those things are scary. Some of them are big decisions. Some of them are out of your control, but it's this inspirational book about, um, you know, the positive aspects of beginning something new. And so going to school is a, you know, a big part of that. Uh, but it doesn't have to be just that. But that's, you know, a, the way a lot of people read this. Um, so the next video we will, oh, go, whoops, <laughs> we will start with part two in the next video. Um, but yeah, this one, um, you're, your first discussion post will be, uh, to, will go, and the first uh, attendance quiz will go with this this video, and the discussion post will probably, will be around concepts from this video, and then um, in part two, you can watch that one, and you'll have a separate attendance quiz and a separate discussion post that goes with that, remember, because we're not meeting in person this week. Um, so I hope you enjoyed that, and I hope you enjoy um, the next video, uh, part two, so stay tuned. Um, I'm probably gonna about to record that here in just a little bit, and I have a whole other set of books and slides for the second two concepts that we're going to be looking at for coming of age fiction books. So I will see you in part two. Bye!